All right, here it is, last one, lesson number 32 of the level one course. We're going to talk about leads and walls, and I mentioned it briefly in the one on ST changes, and you've seen this slide before, but it's a good starting point here as a quick review. We ought to be identifying a patient with a STEMI in the field. We ought to be able to identify what wall is involved. We ought to be able to think through what artery feeds that wall usually, and what else that artery feeds. So our STEMI patients, we ought to be identifying with a 12 lead. We ought to be taking some additional leads when necessary to get a full view of what ventricles and what walls of, of the left ventricle are involved. And we ought to be able to put all this together and have a pretty good picture of what's going on in Mrs. Smith's heart and what problems she may have conduction system wise and cardiac output wise and so the 12 lead is magic and we can see lots of information there now it would be nice if all of us had the same vasculature it would be nice if the right coronary always supplies the AV node it would be nice it usually does but 10 percent of the time it's the left circumflex that supplies the AV node the, the SA nodes even more half and half half the time it's the right coronary half the time it's the left circ so who knows here's some good information on arteries I don't think this is I know it's not G rated I don't even think it's PG rated it's probably R rated but here it is just to be complete there are the main coronary arteries but some of us have a little bit of variation in what arteries feed and what and so if we can identify where the STEMI is we can know most of the time what artery is feeding that think about what else that artery is feeding and we may be able to anticipate some problems coming up from Mrs. Smith now leads and walls I think I wish they'd called it cameras or views instead of leads leads to me sounds like a wire but whatever the lead on a 12 lead is essentially a view from a certain angle and it's think of it as a camera like a surveillance camera that is mounted in a certain way and it's aimed at a certain area and so each lead is like a particular camera view now our standard leads look at the left ventricle we can move some and get a look at the right ventricle we may need to move some standard leads to get a look at some walls of the left ventricle that aren't being seen contiguous leads matter contiguous means that they are looking at the same wall or they are physically next to each other where, where we're talking about the chest lead. So lead 2, lead 3, and lead AVF are contiguous. Lead V1 and V2 are contiguous. V2 and V3 are con they're physically next to each other. That's contiguous leads. Again, um, take some time to look this over. Think about this concept. We'll practice it a lot when you're in class. We need you to know this chart mentioned that the last time and you really ought to start learning this chart you ought to start grabbing a napkin at lunch and just drawing this out you ought to come into the classroom and grab one of the little dry erase boards and just write this out you ought to on your way to lunch go grab a piece of sidewalk chalk from the back door by the classroom area and go out there on the concrete sidewalk and just draw this out you ought to just stop when you're in the in the at the park and go find some dirt and draw this in the dirt you ought to just know this that's the way to learn this kind of stuff, your own little flashcards. But you need to know this chart. This chart's laid out just like a 12 lead is, and it shows you what lead is looking at what wall. And you'll notice that AVR is not looking at any wall, and you'll notice that there's not any one lead looking at the posterior wall. Important things for you to know. You'll know that none of these are looking at the right ventricle. If we want to look at the right ventricle, we've got to move a lead. If we want to look at the posterior wall, we've got to move a lead. And so, here we go. Lead 2, 3, and AVF is inferior. V3 and V4 are the anterior walls. V1, V2 are septal. The lateral walls got four cameras on it. One, AVL, V5, V6. And so you can have changes in, in more than one lead, which would indicate ischemia in more than one, law, more than one wall. <clears throat> Pretty much the rest of this presentation tries to make sense of this for you. And here's a look at the inferior wall. And you see the camera mounted down there at the foot looking up at the bottom wall, the inferior wall of the heart. Now, when you're in a classroom, one of our exercises, we have Play-Doh. 
We make a heart out of Play-Doh. We make a left ventricle out of Play-Doh. Different colors of Play-Doh. So that you kind of get a feel, literally, for what's going where. And we mount some little paperclip cameras and we try to give you a chance to really internalize this kind of thing. Plus it makes your hands smell good to play with Play-Doh. <clears throat> Here's a great deal of information. You can look at this on the PDF. Kind of digest this. Think about what arteries are supplying that inferior wall and what else that artery supplies. And it turns out that a lot of the time that inferior wall is supplied by the right coronary artery, which also supplies the right ventricle. So people having inferior stemmies can also be having right ventricular stemmies. And so we'll probably want to do a right-sided chest lead, a right-sided view. And all we're going to do is take V4 off the uh, left chest and move it over on the right chest. That's how you look at the right ventricle. You just move a lead that's looking at the left ventricle. We like V4 and make it V4R. We'll show you that in class. It's pretty cool. Remember that in this chart, look at that chart there at the bottom. Do you see posterior anywhere? No. So we're going to have to move some leads. Have to move some leads. I like to take V6 and make it a V8. Put it around back, mid-scapular line, at the same level. We mentioned this way back when we were talking about lead placement. Way, way back. And we'll talk about this in class. And so this makes a PG or R-rated medic. A lot of field medics aren't doing this. There's just no reason why. It's just you know lack of engagement in, in being really good clinically. But how can you not look at the posterior wall? Why is it okay to just ignore a wall of the left ventricle. We want to find stemmies. We can find them if we'll move some, move some cameras around. Here's a camera looking at the anterior wall. Some more good information about that, a different way to look at it. I don't need you to know all the names of these arteries. You ought to know the right coronary, you ought to know the left main, the left anterior descending, and the circumflex. Those are the arteries you ought to know. Lateral left ventricular wall is under multiple camera surveillance. Lead 1 and AVL look high up on that wall. V5 and V6 are looking at the lower part of that wall. That lateral wall is really well covered. What's lateral, what's septal, what's posterior, what's anterior, what's inferior really comes um, and sticks in your brain. It really kind of comes alive for you when we do the Play-Doh drill. Here's the whole big screen again where they're pointing where that wall is, what lead is matching to what wall. Very, very key information, stuff you got to know, leads and walls. More stuff on the lateral walls. Picture's worth a thousand words in a lot of cases. Makes a lot of sense when you see it like this. Makes a lot of sense when you make a little model of one and play with it a little bit. Look at this closely on the PDF. Soak all this stuff in. You're going to want to watch this and review this stuff frequently so where you get really, really, really good at it. Here's the septal wall. More stuff about septal wall. And here's a nice big overall chart. And boy, this would be something if you knew everything on this chart and you knew it cold and you knew it at 3 o'clock in the morning and you knew it when you'd already worked three days in a row and you were dead tired and your blood glucose level was out of control and you really really needed some caffeine and if you knew it then then Mrs. Smith when she called you then would get really good service from you then and that would be pretty cool very very good chart to know leads and walls matter 